All right. Well, welcome everyone to our CPP Robotics SoccerBot Competition Workshop. And this workshop is specifically about the rules and regulations, overview and explanation. Today we'll be talking about uh, what our competition is and things to know if you would like to participate. So if you have any questions for us, you can drop them in the chat. Uh, if we're finished talking, you can, uh, you can, sorry, unmute and then just ask the question. And we're here to have a conversation about them. If you have suggestions for rules, we'll be talking about that at the end as well. If you need other information from us, like links, we'll be trying to post those in the Zoom chat. Uh, also, if you need to see our uh, screen share, you can say it's going to be hosted through my camera so I could do some extra camera work. So if you need help getting that set up and you need to be able to see that, let us know and we'll, we'll try and help you out. But uh, I guess to talk about us, so my name is Guillermo Contreras. I am a, a CPP alumni. I'm a, I had a uh, bachelor's degree in computer engineering. And Christopher, go for it. All right. I'm Christopher J. Watson. I'm the current project director of the CPP Robotics Club and uh, a senior here at CPP in both computer engineering and electrical engineering. Right. Go ahead. I'm going to switch over to our presentation screen here. All right. So again, if anybody has any trouble seeing this clearly, uh, let us know. It will help you out. All right. So first, let's talk about the spirit of the competition. So what is the soccer ball competition? This is a project that I created around like three or four years ago that I wanted to be open to all skill levels. So if you're a beginner in robotics or you're a regular competition goer, you're welcome to compete with us and participate in our competition. It's supposed to be something that's friendly originally between club members of CPP Robotics, but we've expanded it to include other clubs as well. So if you're here from another club on campus, if you're here from just seeing the news, you're welcome to join us. Uh, the idea of it is to do creative, lightweight, or eco-friendly robots. So that way you can have them compete in a basic game of soccer. And with that, we have simple objectives. When you drop your robot in, you're just looking to score goals or you're looking to block goals. So our, our competition is pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, we'll be talking about the build limits and stuff like that when we get to that. Otherwise, uh, we'll go ahead and start jumping into our rules. Okay. So we have a officials rules document. Uh, if you would like a link to these rules, uh, we can we go ahead and drop that link in the Zoom chat here so that people can click on that if you'd want to follow along with us. Uh, if you're already in our CPP Robotics Discord channel, you can check the uh, SB content channel. Uh, if you're also not a paid member of Robotics and you want to see these rules and you're in that server, let us know in the public channel. We can uh, post something there. Otherwise, there's a couple other posts that have it. So if you need those documents, let us know and we'll get those to you. As uh, you can follow along. And we got our link posted there in the chat. So again, if you need some sort of access to that, let us know. And I'll move on to our rules here in a second. All right, so starting from the top, Let's go through our first section, which will be team registration and structure, section one. So things to know from this section, and this is the style I will be doing it. I'm going to just kind of go through every section, give you the gist of what it's talking about. If you want to know the fine details, make sure to look at that document so that you can get uh, familiar with anything in there. And if you have any questions or concerns about that stuff in there, you can let us know. But I'll, I'll be going through the overview of it today. So there is no fee to enter this competition. So you don't have to pay any sort of entry fee or registration fee when you do your uh, team sign-up. One robot per registered team. You can also have a backup robot. Uh, we want it to be one robot per team because we're going to be checking this robot to make sure it fits our criteria. There's also going to be one team per side. So the game is going to be played as like a 1v1 scenario to where one team is on one side, one team is on the other. Also, no limit to team size. So you can either be one person playing this game or you can have 100 people in that idea. Uh, there's no limit to how many people you can have on your team. For, for this year specifically, because um, we're just getting back into the swing of things, we are open to registration from free students. Um, in future coming years, we will want it to be between club members. But for now, like it's open to everyone. 
Uh, another thing that kind of excluded with that, uh, drivers must be paid, uh, CP Robotics members. Uh, we'll, we'll just ignore this one for now. Uh, but one thing is drivers cannot be switched after the match starts. We want to keep drivers in there. So if you say you're going to play this match, because let's say you got five people on your team, and you want to cycle through people, make sure to keep that driver in. We won't be switching drivers once the, uh, the timer starts. So, anybody have any questions on our team registration uh, structure page? Nice. Things are looking good. All right. Let's go ahead and move to our next section here. I'm going to scroll on the document as well here. All right. Let's move into section two, the gameplay. So this is how the games are going to work. They are three minutes of basically playing robot soccer to where goals score your team one point. Uh, if there is a tie at the end of the match, we go into a max of 30 seconds of overtime. And if we can't settle that tie just for the sake of moving things forward, then we will assign a tie. And to kind of change how that system is going to work and to make it fair for wins versus ties, a win gains your team two points, a tie gains your team one point, and then a loss gains your team no points. Another important rule about the gameplay that we want to emphasize is pinning. Because in, in things like Vex Robotics, and uh, I wasn't a part of FRC, but might also be a thing uh, there was pinning rules we kind of have the same thing here to where if you pin a robot while you're playing the game you're allowed to pin them for five seconds but we will count you down and then after those five seconds are up you have to back off and you can't pin for another five seconds this is to just keep the game a little active so it's not a game of like i scored one goal and then i pin somebody in the corner and then the game is over for like two minutes and nobody's doing it Pinning rules not too aggressive. We want to keep people rolling around and, and getting to use their, their bot that they created. Any questions on the general sense of the, uh, the gameplay? Pretty much, it's a game of soccer. Like we're good. Keep on rolling then. All right, so now section three. This is our field and game object specifications. So let's talk about the field and then we'll talk about the game ball. So the field specifications, uh, COVID's been a little tough. We wanted to have a custom table for all this, but uh, we're gonna be working on some of these ideas. But for now, keep in mind that the field size will be around four feet by six feet. So you can keep that in mind with your robot's speed or you know even your overall size. The goal size will also be 14 inches wide by four inches tall. So if you have uh, some sort of like, let's call it like a targeting system, you're going to be aiming for that size of hole, you could say. Or if you're designing a robot to be able to block, you might want to make it a size that could easily block that, uh, that width. Also, the walls will be six inches, just for, for reference. Now, as for the game ball specifications, this one's a little weird because uh, foosballs, for some reason, they came in two different sizes. We have a normal looking foosball which is a little bit smaller than foosballs we found on Amazon. So just in case, we wanted to list both of those here. So the larger version from Amazon from Amazon is 3.3 centimeters wide, and it also weighs 24 grams. Now the standard foosball, which maybe one you more see on a table, that one's just 3 centimeters wide and only 16 grams. So if you wanted to get like a servo to lift up a soccer ball, you can keep these weights in mind just in case you wanted to build anything like that. Any questions on field specifications, game objects? All right, we'll go ahead and keep on moving then. Section four, this is our design constraints and regulations. This is one to pay attention to for sure. Let's talk about robot specifications and those limits. The maximum weight for your robot is two pounds. So if you're looking for batteries and things like that, keep in mind that uh, more batteries you put on there for stronger motors, the more weight you're going to have, and you might get pushed over that weight limit. Also, the starting dimensions are one foot by one foot by one foot size. In comparison to the weight, we do understand that that's a very big size for such a small weight. We put the weight in there just as a, a rough measurement, so that way people can be creative with their design. The, I would say that the weight limit is more of the, the design constraint versus the size. Also, this is the starting dimension for the robot. If you have some sort of device that wants to expand after the match starts from one foot, this is a possibility you can do too. Something to keep in mind. 
Now, one thing about uh, robot specifications, the robot must be controlled directly by you. This is not going to be an autonomous competition, so we want to have drivers directly controlling the robots at all times. If you have autonomous features like an auto kicker or something like that, that's okay. We're, we're all fine with that, but we want you to have control your robot. So if we need to pause the match or anything like that, uh, there's an easy way for you to stop your robot or things like that. Now here's things that your robot cannot do while playing the game. Uh, they cannot intentionally damage the field or the game elements, so we don't want uh, holes or burn marks in our table or damage and chips to the uh, the foosball. Uh, you cannot drastically damage other teams' robots, so you cannot go after somebody and try to crush them or rip off pieces. As Christopher was talking about earlier, this isn't battle bots. We're just trying to play soccer, so think of it that way. Goal is not to destroy people's bots. Uh, Another one is engulfing the soccer ball completely. We're going to talk about this in more detail later, but think of it as when you grab the soccer ball, you can only grab, or, sorry, it's weird to describe. Half of it must be visible. So if you had a clamp and you go like this, half of it must still be visible to whoever's watching. And again, we'll go over that later. Lastly, you're not allowed to wedge yourself into the goal to block any uh, soccer shots. Uh, we can test this as well if there is like an accusation of somebody wedging themselves in the goal. A, a person just blocking the goal versus wedging means they could be pushed if they're like you may use like a stick or something like that. They should be held to the ground with like the rubber of their wheels or whatever they're using to move. Not uh, sticking themselves in the corner of the wall and then uh, getting held in there. Alright, any questions on the uh, design constraints and regulations. Main takeaways from here, for sure, don't forget those two pounds and that uh, one foot cubed build size, for sure. All right, let's move on to our next section, section five, the robot approval process. So this one's here to say that when you come to compete in the competition, before you're truly allowed to compete, we're just going to go ahead and check your robot. We're going to do the weight and the size check to make sure that it's under one foot in all directions and it's less than two pounds. Uh, also, you need to be able to demonstrate all the capabilities of your robot. And this is uh, for safety, because if your robot does something that could injure someone, that could be a problem. So. If you have secret uh, techniques, you can show them to us, and you must show all of them to us. Also, if you're worried about other people seeing these techniques, these techniques, you can show them to us in secrecy. So we can we can walk away, and you can uh, demonstrate them somewhere else. Uh, if you do actions that are not showcased, this could result in disqualification on safety considerations because we want to make sure that there's nothing that could endanger people playing the game, since. We don't have uh, safety measures like one would for battle bots, let's say, with plastic screens and things like that. So please keep that one in mind. And we won't, uh, we won't spoil any, any special moves that your robots have. All right, any questions about approval process? So we're good on that one. All right, section six. The robot configuration requirements. So this one's mainly about uh, how you move about the playfield. Uh, we don't have too much of a restriction on this one, so it doesn't have to be just soccer cars. They can be anything that have like legs, shuffle feet, uh, omni wheels, which are still wheels, a uh, ground effect hovering, or things that move around like a snake. That's all okay. We don't have any issues with that. The only thing that we don't want is things with rotors or anything that can kind of fly too high above the table because that put some things out of control and that could uh, interfere with how we want the game to be played. So keep in mind, if you got any cool locomotion methods, as long as they're ground-based, you're probably good to, to use them. It doesn't have to be just tires. So, like, in essence, if I had one of those super old ones that blew air at the ground and it had, like, one of those rubber bumpers with holes on it so that it could hover, but not too high... That mm -hmm. would be fine. Yep, exactly. And that would be cool, too. The, the play field should be relatively flat, so if you're looking for something like that, you know, you, you probably would be good to use something, and it'd be kind of cool to see. We're looking for creative ideas here with our competition. Keep that in mind. Any creativity, we'd love to see. All right, let's keep on moving, then. 
All right, this is a big one here. Big emphasis. All right, this is section seven, the weapons and hazards section. This is definitely one to read. If you're considering weapons, let us stop you right here. We can't have any weapons on a robot because that would be endangering to the technology, endangering to the people involved, and all that stuff. So let's keep that in mind firstly, but we'll, we'll go through just a couple things. So here's things that are prohibited. Anything with sharp points, uh, spikes, cutting edges. So these are things that you cannot have. We can also test this. So, you know, if you have a robot that it has sharp edges, but not uh, by intention, uh, keep in mind if it could cut an open hand, if we were to touch it, something like that, then you will have to, let's say, sand that. Like, let's say if you're losing, uh, or sorry, losing, if you're using aluminum, uh, keep in mind, you don't want to get cut out here just in case. Uh, spinning devices as well, we don't want things like that. Saw blades, uh, bars, drum discs. Uh, those high-speed spinning devices could be a little bit dangerous, so we want to stay away from those. Anything that pierces or stabs, pneumatic, spring-powered, uh, hammers, we don't want any of those. Now, this is a thing that we'll talk about, uh, scoring objects, again, but just keep in mind, hammers meant to do damage or to crush, we don't want any of those. Also, entanglement weapons like strings, cables, tape, nets, uh, if you somehow create glue, <laughs> if you have like a, a glue ejector for the field, None of that as well, because that'll ruin the play field. Uh, we also don't want people's motors getting tangled with strings and things like that, and, and ruin them for the rest of the competition. Uh, liquids. We don't want any liquids. We're dealing with electronics. Uh, keep those liquids out of here. If you're using liquids in the robot for cooling or something like that, uh, try to make sure that it stays in the robot, because if it does leak, that could lead to a disqualification uh, if it damages the play field or if it gets on other people's robots. Uh, also, no fire. <laughs> No, no, no fire, no flame weapons, or even pyrotechnics. They would look cool, but, uh, you know. The table will be made of wood, and it probably will be flammable, so keep that in mind. Uh, no electric weapons or jamming, so you cannot, uh... I, I dropped my thought there. You basically, you can't create jammers to mess up other people's radio communications, so you will need to be allowed to communicate with a robot. Uh, if you're doing stuff like that, don't put that on the robot. And no visual interferences as well, so strobes, lasers, smoke, don't want anything like that. Uh, also, one that people have asked about before, we don't want any uh, intentionally dropped parts. So if you drop spike strips, speed bumps to interfere with people, or even if you just drop kind of parts of the robot intentionally to just kind of be in the way, we don't want to have that in this competition just to, to keep the, the rules a little bit more streamlined or the gameplay a little bit more uh, streamlined. Any questions on weaponry anyone has? Any new ideas for me to add to this slide? I'm, I'm accepting new weaponry ideas. I mean, you can have ball bearings inside your car or whatever, but they need to not intentionally be dropped on the field. Just like... a second. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they are, they're allowed uh, for your own robot's use, but once they've become marbles on the field and things like that, then we gotta, we gotta call a halt to it. And just to be clear, there are spring-powered or pneumatic or even solenoid kickers that are allowed, but they have to be with the intention of hitting the ball, not other players. Yes. Anybody gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, no problem. Anybody got any other questions? We'll move on to uh, things you can have on your robot. All right, let's talk about section eight, shooting devices. So if you want to play soccer, as, as they do in soccer, you use your legs to kick the ball. We are perfectly fine with having active scoring devices on your robot. So like what Christopher was talking about, if you want to flippers, kickers, uh, Anything that kind of flicks a soccer ball in a direction, like, that's perfectly fine. And there's not really any regulations to that. If it's so crazy powerful that it would, like, hurt me if I put my hand in the kicker, uh, we would suggest toning that back a little bit because it is just a soccer ball. Also, uh, we don't want the soccer ball to leave the game field, like, if it just keeps getting kicked out. So, kind of give that one a test. If it's a little too strong, maybe find some way to tone it back a little bit uh, just to avoid destroying other people's robots uh, in the process of using your scoring device. Also, if you want to have a, a continuously spinning shooter, 
you're allowed to do so. So like a like a rot I, I said rotating drum before. So let me say rotating drum here. You want to have that with like a stick on it for kicking. That's okay. But make sure that it's completely enclosed in the robot so that it can't touch other people. So that way it's like the soccer ball kind of maybe has to fall into a channel. And then when it's in that channel, it just gets flicked out of the out of the little hole. So that'll be okay. Also, you can lift the soccer ball up and uh, kind of carry it around. Or you can clamp it like if you've got some sort of a, like a two plate so you can hold it in. And we're going to talk about that thing I mentioned before about engulfing. But that's also allowed. So we do still uh, encourage active scoring devices. It doesn't have to be just uh, rolling around and pushing the soccer ball with your chassis. So Yeah. Um, so like a spinning device, it, it, continuously spinners, like for example, if anyone has ever played with Hot Wheels, the launchers for the cars are basically a continuously spinning wheel inside, like, um, basically two tracks. So what happens is, is the ball rolls through this channel and then gets flung really fast. Like that's perfectly legal. But like a continuously spinning thing on the outside of your vehicle where, oh, you accidentally brushed up against a car and now you ripped off their whole chassis. That's probably not a thing we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going to have things that, let's say, could be deemed dangerous, we want those away from that possible danger. So at least if it's inside your soccer bot, like, I mean, if you destroy your own soccer bot with your spinning device, like it comes loose, it's like, you know, that's how the game goes. That That's happened to me before, it's for sure. But... That way, it'll it'll only uh, affect your gameplay. Cause that that's also kind of why we allow allow you to register a secondary car, just in case. Like, like these things are gonna hit each other. These cars are gonna like run into each other, and they can break. It happens. If it's accidental, that's not a disqualification. Like, it's just part of the game, uh, part of engineering a car that won't like just fall apart um so like if you have some sort of crazy device maybe on your secondary car it's just a simple car <laughs> <laughs> all right anybody have any questions about the active shooters otherwise we'll move to our next section this one will go into more detail about uh, a thing i mentioned before let's talk about engulfing this is section nine so a thing that we've put in place is we want the game object to always be visible to let's say the referees we should always know where it is and in that idea uh we're gonna go with this half visible rule so if you had uh, a soccer ball object and it was to be covered up by something we should be able to see at least half of the surface area and this uh this is not bypassed by clear plastic People have told me this before, and I'm like, that's a great idea, but now I have to put it into my rules. So, it must be clearly visible without any sort of uh, enclosure. And this goes for any device that would do that. So that's uh, like a, a claw machine style, if it's like a little clamp thing, if it's like two cups that enclose the ball. Uh, all those things need to somehow still show half of that soccer ball. Because this also gives the opportunity for people to, you could say, steal it. So let's say you got the soccer ball in your clamp and somebody's like, oh, no, I need this point. I got to take it back. They have the ability to maybe like swing their own little scoring arm, maybe knock that ball off of your scoring system. So there's still kind of a chance. It'll be like a bit of a bummer if a robot grabs a ball, locks it up, and then just has to drive to the goal and drop it off and then they get a goal. So we want a little bit of uh, a little bit of risk to whoever's using their scoring device of it could be blocked. It could still be stolen. Uh, another thing that uh, we've talked about in past workshops of the rules is if you want to have a device for capturing this ball, like a conveyor belt loader or like a trebuchet catapult, you're allowed to have that. We're going to allow that, but your robot must stay stationary while the ball is loading that and until it is fired or released. So if you have a catapult, you can't move until that catapult fires. If you have a conveyor belt, it must fully go through the conveyor belt load onto whatever it would load to, and then be shot from that uh, until you can move again. And to think of it, think of it like dribbling in basketball. Once you've got the ball in your hands, you need to just stand there. Otherwise, we'll, we'll get you for traveling. 
And here, I'm going to switch back to the cameras. I'll show an example of this half visual. I got, I got a chapstick here. So the idea is, like, if I have this, I need to be able to see half of this object the whole time. So if your score goes like this, this is not allowed because it's completely hidden. If your scoring device has something like this, let's say, I can still see half of this, and you're okay to do that. That's kind of a way to keep it in mind, which also works for, like, a clamp. So if you go like this, obviously, we can still see this object. This gives people the opportunity to still kind of knock the, the game object around. Or if you have like a little cup, you know, a little cup holding it like this, you can still see half of that. So that's kind of the idea that we're going with there. It's a little tricky to explain, so I try to explain it as best as I can every single time. All right, any questions on the engulfing rule? What, what I would say is, is there's probably one exception to the engulfing rule is that let's say you have a loading device for your catapult and it has to like suck it into a tube or something right quick that's not going to be a violation as long as you're not moving at all like you, you can't just sit there and hold the ball forever of course in fact probably before launch it needs to become visible again but in the idea of it all, like say you have like just a little tube right here that sucks in the ball and carries it through a tube up until your launcher. That's probably going to be allowed. Assuming you're not moving during the whole process of loading. All right. Anybody have any other questions on this engulfing rule? Seems like we're good. Let's keep on moving then. Now, let's talk about unsportsmanlike conduct. You got to always talk about this because sometimes it does get like this. I uh, want to emphasize again that our competition, it's here to be a friendly one. We're just looking to have some fun. So keep this in mind while you're playing. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be while you're designing. If you want to design a really good robot, you know, you're fully capable of doing that. But, you know, just keep in mind, this is all friendly. There's... Uh, not too much notoriety you can say you can gain from the competition. We're looking to just kind of bring in cool skills that you have, showcase your robot, and have a good time. So we want to see creativity, ingenuity, driving skill. We want to see all stuff like that. We want to see what other clubs are doing, how they're making robots, and kind of share ideas, see cool things, take some nice videos of people's designs. Uh, so keep that in mind. If there is unsportsmanlike conduct, this can relieve, or this can result in disqualification. So please keep that in mind. If if we are having a problem with some of the people who are uh, either playing the game or even watching the game, uh, we will take some actions towards that. So you know, please keep that in mind. Uh, some examples here, like if you're attempting to damage or destroy other teams' robots kind of relentlessly, and we we know that we see that this is a pattern, we will let you know that we've seen this, and we would not like you to do so. Uh, this also includes misbehavior or misconduct on or off the playfield. So, you know, you don't want to insult people. We don't want to make people feel bad about their designs and things like that. Uh, let everyone have fun is is the big the big rule here. We're looking to have fun. So please keep that in mind. If that's not the case, then we will we'll have to uh, we'll have to handle that. Anybody got any questions about uh, unsportsmanlike conduct? If there are accidents, just keep in mind, uh, if you make an accident and you destroy somebody's robot, then, like, that's okay. Because accidents can happen, and, you know, we can we can talk it out, of course, but as long as they're not intentional. All right, let's keep on moving, then. All right, let's talk about uh, when robots become disabled. So, a robot is disabled when it cannot be controlled anymore by its driver. This can be something that occurs due to something that the driver does, like if they run into something or if a robot breaks down or if they get flipped by another team, if they have like some sort of a robot flipper. Uh, keep in mind, if one robot is disabled, the match will continue until the end. Now, if all the robots in play become disabled, this one's a little bit touchy, but we may call the match a tie because the match was not completed. Like, for example... We do not want the style of the match to be something of go in, score one goal, and then you just destroy all the robots. So that way is that the match will end automatically and you get that win. Uh, again, this competition is supposed to be something that's fun. And if that's kind of the play style that somebody brings to the competition, then we might uh, change how that works. Or 
we might not award points at all for that match. Maybe that match has to be replayed at another time or something like that. So just keep in mind that uh, disabled robots, that's a thing that can happen. If it's somebody specifically disabling robots and now they've all been disabled, uh, we might do some special scoring for that one. That's kind of the, that's kind of the idea behind that. Uh, another thing to note, uh, please do not lift people's robots outside of the play field. It does, or it will be on a table of sorts. So lifting somebody out of the play field and falling even just a foot, that could damage somebody's robots in an irreparable way. And if so, we may consider that intentional damaging of somebody's robot, and then that could lead to a a, a disqualification. So, if they flip and they stay inside the playing field, that can be fine. And exactly. we have we have ways to say like, okay, like if they're disabled for so long, we'll pause the match, flip them back over, and that'll be good. Um, like some intentional flipping might be okay as long as it stays within the table and you're not purposely trying to harm anything. Exactly. All right. Anybody have any questions about uh, when robots are disabled? All right, we keep on rolling here. All right, section 12, kind of a quicker one. This is wireless communications. So in this competition, we will be having wirelessly controlled robots. That's another thing. You cannot have a wired controlled robot. So there can be no cables attaching you from your robot onto the table. So you need to use some sort of uh, wireless communication. In that sense, if you're going to use that, it cannot interfere with other teams. So here's just some examples of some of the ones that we plan to use in robotics. If you're using Bluetooth, uh, you can only connect to your robot. Please do not hack into other people's robots, is the idea. You must uh, only have your robot under control. Uh, if you're using uh, RF, so if you're using uh, dedicated RF chips that maybe you've built or you've bought, you cannot change communications or transceiver addresses after the match has started. If there is some sort of sign of that, then we'll stop the match and we'll rectify it. And if you do it on purpose, we'll be upset. If the match starts and, like, let's say two of the receiver addresses are kind of the same, that's okay. Then we'll we'll correct that and then we'll restart the match and nothing uh, nothing will be a problem there. I used to do Vex Robotics and that was the biggest pain, was getting your robot to control perfectly because somebody else's robot would override yours, all this jank. So, please keep in mind, only control your robots in whatever wireless communications that you plan to use. And again... Do not create things that interfere with other people's wireless communications. If this is unintentional, like your broadcast strength or something like that, that's okay. We'll try and fix that. But uh, if, it is if it is intentional, we will not allow it. So, for example, like, I know that my controller and the Hyperloop controller pretty much are the same. They run off the same architecture. Um... When we get there, we're just going to have to agree to use different channels. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. And that's that. <laughs> if uh, if we get closer to the competition day, there might be like a, a post that I send out and saying like, hey, are you using uh, like the NRF chip from Amazon? Uh, if so, please let me know what channel you plan to use. So maybe we can all kind of coordinate ahead of time and set like, okay, I'll take this channel. We kind of space them out nice. Uh, we can also do that before the competition as well. So... Maybe we'll take a little bit of early setup time to be like, all right, everybody turn on your robots and test them all at the same time. Let's see if uh, one person gets control over everybody and stuff like that. So we'll work that out for sure. Any questions on wireless communication technology? Uh, if you need help with wireless communications as well, let us know. Uh, Christopher has some great workshops on using the, uh, the RF antennas. It's pretty cool. And I know how to use Bluetooth with uh, some smartphone apps if you're looking for some simple control that way in uh, Arduino. So, go back to my presentation as well. All right. Let's go into our final section here on our rules document, competition and rule set disclaimers. Uh, if you have any questions about these rules, if there's something that you would like us to edit, or if there's something you would like us to add, Please reach out to us and let us know. These are these are not rules that are set in stone. These are rules mainly here as an initial guide on how we want the competition to go. 
But if you see any problems that could arise from something in here, you know, you let us know. I have edited the rules already this year to include some other things or also change a few of the aspects of the gameplay. So we're open to discussions on, on all that stuff. All right. So I have two questions for you then, Gabe, myself. All right. So let's say someone wanted to add a GoPro for whatever reason, endangering their GoPro on their little soccer bot. <laughs> Would that be allowed and not counted as part of their weight? You know what? I'm actually glad that you asked that because this was something that I did in our original competition and I talked to the people playing and we deemed that as not included weight. So if you would like to have some sort of video capture device for capturing footage, like you want it to, like for, for your own club's uh, participation, or you, know, you think it's cool, you want to see what it looks like first person, we will go ahead and not count that weight. So if your camera is removable, either when you weigh that, um, you can just take it off. If it's not removable, maybe before you put it on, weigh it or something like that. Uh, all of us have a weight scale, obviously, so we can weigh the camera and then weigh your robot or something like that. Uh, but yes, the camera shall not be included in your robot's weight. Since technically the camera wouldn't do much, like as a, um, as an advantage to your robot, it's more of a cool thing for you, so. Um, I'd encourage then, that too. It'd be cool. And then my uh, second question would be, so, you know, all of us are going to go on and try and find, you know, the cheapest solution for this unless we're sponsored by a club. Um, so a lot of the cheap LiPo batteries or something along those lines are actually pretty heavy. <laughs> um <laughs> Sorry, like someone was just sending me a message. Uh, but no, like a lot of the cheap lipo batteries. Um, so if they can't meet the weight requirement, like trying to struggle with these batteries, assuming it's not like some 48 volt super battery that's meant to drive like some sort of ridiculous actuator. Um, like we can be a little lenient because of battery weight. That's mm -hmm. right. Is that right? Yes, that is definitely true. And I, I've got a, I got a story for that one. When we had our first competition, this is something that we will allow for safety. Because to lower the weight of the soccer bond, uh, one of our members used Dollar Tree double A's. Uh, I was using Amazon double A's, and I didn't know that this was going to be a thing. Uh, those Dollar Tree batteries, they may be double A's and they're you know, the right voltage. They are not meant for load. Those batteries got so hot that you could say they could have started a fire. Because they're just not, let's say, made for the load. But if you don't think about that, because not even I thought about that, you wouldn't know. So if you want to have like a secure battery system using LiPos because you want to make sure that the current's good and it's not going to overload what the battery can deliver, we'll be leaning with that for sure, as you're saying. Because uh, it's, it's only as if you're saying like if you pack 10 LiPos onto your robot for some reason because you're trying to charge like a, like a stun gun on the thing. Then we'll be like, all right, you don't have to do that. You could take some of those off and not use that. So if they're just for driving your robot and you're trying to use like better motors, 12 volt motors, and you need a little bit more power, we'll be okay with that. I, I think we can be lenient. We might disclose that and saying like, hey, everyone, we got a robot here. It's a little bit over. It's just the lipo weight. We're going to go ahead and allow it. So then if someone really has a problem with that, we can discuss what that might mean. But Again, competition is for fun, so it's not going to be like super, uh, like, oh, you're that two grams over that two pounds. How dare you? That sort of thing. So we're, we're very lenient with how we want this competition to play out. Again, we're here for fun. So anything like that, we can discuss it. We won't just be like, all right, no, go home. You can't play. But those are good questions. The, the whole point of this competition is to enjoy yourself. It's not to be super strict. It's not to be like super technical it's meant to you put together something that you find to be creative uh and go play a game like if you buy a little kit on amazon and play with it that's perfectly fine if you make it out of cardboard perfectly fine if you get all super crazy with it and like design everything and 3d print it and manufacture a pcb board that is also fine like the whole point is although I would be impressed if you could find a PCB board within the next two weeks uh, specifically for this. 
Um, but the entire point of it is uh, we're here to enjoy playing a game of soccer with people and looking at the creativity of others. That is the whole point of the soccer bot competition. The whole point of the soccer bot competition. Like, if you win, lose, whatever, you know, there might be like a little plastic trophy or something. But the the, the main point is, is to go out, be creative, and get to know each other. Exactly. It, we want it to be fun. Maybe in the future, you know, we could have like a, a more serious competition to where there is like a true prize of like a, a very nice and shiny trophy and things like that. Uh, but we're just trying to get uh, Soccerbot kind of back on its uh, back rolling on its wheels, you could say. It, it's been tough. When I when I originally created Soccerbot, we had one competition, and then we were going to come back for a much bigger year, and then COVID hit, and we really haven't able we haven't been able to do Soccerbot for a long time, and it's been a shame. But there's really you know nothing we could do about that. So now that we have an opportunity this year, we just want people to kind of get in there, have fun experience what it's like to play competitive robotics if you haven't done uh competitive robotics like it it is very different when you're designing something first up just for you like something on your desk or something like that versus building something that like oh i do have to keep in mind like this thing's got to be kind of strong because if somebody hits me from the side what if my wires unplug or i gotta beat other people's it's a whole different uh idea to designing of you're trying to beat someone else's design for a specific reason or if you're trying to just make something that both looks really cool but also will perform because you make something that looks really cool drop it in and then it it just like turns left like well then you know, you're gonna feel kind of bad about that if it's something at your house you don't feel bad but it'll it'll be on display for all of us to see it'll it'll be funny i'm sure <laughs> we're looking for funny designs so if you got funny designs as well feel free to enter those but so yeah. In the robotics club, um, we are going to shift things a little bit, uh, and I, I'm glad you mentioned it, Charles. Like, uh, kind of our intention moving forward is to give people m more of a progression type pathway, as opposed to just letting you free and try and figure it out. So we're going to have multiple projects, and it's almost going to be multiple paths. Uh, we're going to try and prime people with. OAC bot instead of Zoombot kit. So Zoombot kit's probably going away, but instead we're going to roll the idea of self creation and learning through OAC bot. Uh, if you buy the kit, you're also going to end up with the chassis, and that chassis pretty much fits the bill in order to do soccer bot if you wanted to play a soccer bot competition, um, which will be slightly harder than OAC because you have to add a communication line. And then um, assuming that you've played soccer bot, you have some experience, you've learned things, you've participated, we are going to be participating in the hyper competitive battle bots for, uh, with other schools at UCLA, but having the experience of, you know, OAC bot and then continuing on to soccer bot, this gives us the chance to progress people down the line. We're also spawning a drone project and stuff like that. So new things in the making. But for everyone, we hope to see you there. We hope to see anyone. Like, uh, this is open this year. Like, anyone can participate. Anyone can have fun. Let's see what you got. Exactly. This is a good way for people to, to kind of, if you haven't heard of robotics, also, like, if you're, if you're just seeing this on school newsletters and things like that, if you haven't heard of the Robotics Club and you're interested in what we do, we'll be there. So this is a good chance to come and talk to us to see what it is that we do and the type of projects that we want to make and stuff like that. So uh, it's a good opportunity to possibly get involved, get some extra info. Uh, you know, things with COVID, it's tough to see what clubs are doing nowadays, but hopefully we can kind of roll things back in and then we'll be there in the engineering meadow. So if you're checking out uh, senior projects from the symposium and you're there around that time, you can just walk by and see what we're doing. It'll 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 be great. Let me check my next slide as well. Oh yeah, I'll I'll talk about this, but we can we can wait a second on that. Wait. Oh, okay. oh you know, and I'm I'm not showing my screen. <laughs> nah, I'm like I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's about a good right point. Now, <laughs> yeah, we we got a couple more slides of the presentation as well for extra info. You know what? Let me jump into that so we Let's... can we can show this. 
uh, competition sign up. Let's talk about actually signing up. So if you would like to participate, uh, participate, please sign up using our Google form. If I could get a link to this form dropped in the Zoom chat for me, Christopher, Grab that would be great. Now. I was going to make a QR code. I was late to making the QR code, so I feel sad. But there will be a link to this Google form, and I will preview what the Google form looks like here for people. Here's kind of what it'll look like. It's a simple little form. We want to know just some information, like who to contact, team name, a number of team members, team colors, also a special thing. Uh, if you also have like a team story that you'd like to share with us, of just tell us who you are, that sort of thing. You can answer this as well. The things that are mandatory will have the little asterisk. Otherwise, uh, they, you know, just fill it out. Nothing, sorry, no fee to sign up for this form or do anything like that. So you can just fill it out, let us know. Uh, there's also extra information on the form. If you would like the rules document, it's right there at the bottom. Contact information as well. Uh, let me know as well if there's any issue with you emailing a Gmail, because I, I don't have a school account anymore that's going to go away, so I, I put a Gmail. Uh, also, if you're on the CP Robotics Discord, you can reach out to us directly on there. And I'll have links to that in a minute. All right, so again, if you want to sign up for our competition, feel free to fill out the form, and then that will give me some sort of extra context. So if I need to contact teams directly, I will be able to do so. And then we'll know that uh, you probably will be coming. There we go. There's the last slide. So if you have any questions for us, please let us know. If you need contact information, so again, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll switch to the cameras here in a minute. But again, I am Gabriel Contreras. I am our soccer bot lead for the time being. If you want to message me on our robotics Discord server, uh, there is my tag right there. As well as if you want to email me directly, there's my email. And then there's Christopher's information as well. And if I could get this link to... Where should we post robotics server Discord? I think that'd be good, right? Sure. Uh, we'll post a link to our robotics Discord server. So if you want to reach out to us, we will be in there. So you can DM us. Otherwise, you can send us an email. I'll leave that up for a second, then I'll, I'll move to our camera. But in general, anybody have any questions about soccer bot competition? Any questions about the rules? If you want uh, any extra info on how it's going to play out, uh, any info about the date? Questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, if, yes. we use, if we end up using those active launching um, mechanisms, Mm -hmm. uh will it be accounted if it's on the outside of the base would it be accounted to the measurement constraint like if that oh, i sense? see what you're saying if you have a scoring device that is on the outside of the robot we would count that one in the design so that way it's kind of a restriction of like how crazy of a scoring design you can make so maybe you want to make your chassis like from holding the mouse. Like let's say if your chassis was like this size and your scoring size is going to be even bigger, maybe you'll want to reduce the size of your chassis to get more space for that, that scoring object. So I'd say but, we would include that. But for example, if it's like a catapult and it can fold down so that you can meet like the size, but then it folds out to fire, like that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. It's just your starting size has to be that size restriction. Uh, exactly you can expand okay. during the match like if it's motor actuated and you have like an arm that like makes your robot somehow two foot now like that's okay but it has to start at one foot <laughs> yep <laughs> got it thank you so if we theoretically just expand to essentially block the entire field that's technically legal <laughs> It is technically legal, but what you're going to run into is people are allowed to push you out the way. Now, oh, if, I'm, if you, I'm aware. If you've somehow expanded and wedged yourself against like both walls, that's not allowed. Uh, that that's part of the whole wedging thing. If you expand so that like you're now in the goalpost and then you like have like things that like hammer into the ground and lock you in place that's also going to be considered wedging and you can't just do that. Um, but just being in front of the goalpost, if you can be moved, it's fine. Oh, I, I mean, like 
I was thinking like halfway for yeah, yeah I gotcha I gotcha yeah you you can get creative with blocking designs like that that is that is totally fine uh it'll just be part of that like weight consideration so that's why the two right. pounds the two pounds weight limit is technically pretty light and that's kind of the direction of like how am I gonna block a lot of this space while also it, not using a lot of weight and it being strong that sort of thing yeah yeah because th that's the whole reason like if we made it too much of a thing like if we're like okay you can go a 20 pound robot in that one foot by one foot someone could make like this expando bot that's like just ridiculously heavy with these giant ass motors um and that would probably not be good so the the reason why we're allowing like we'll be flexible on the weight if it's necessary for like a battery right mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll be less willing to be flexible on the weight if it's so that you can like expand and take over the field like you're some sort of blob monster like <laughs> <laughs> So, so what you're saying is I need to invest in, uh, was it like that, was it the ferromagnetic uh, fluid where it's essentially just make that my robot <laughs> take over the field? That's, that's the whole liquid consideration. Yeah, then, yes, then we'll... but is it really a liquid? Well, <laughs> it, it, this is, it begins. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm kidding. You're kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to explain that. <laughs> so for ev for everyone that's here, we've pretty much done the the main part of the rules workshop. Uh, you're now free to leave. Everything else is going to be either conversation or extra supplementals. But yeah, uh, and again, if you have any questions for us here, I'll go back to our uh, presentation here. If you have any questions, make sure to reach out to us. You can let us know if you just want information. Again, we are recording this workshop, so the workshop will be here for you to rewatch. Uh, we can also just provide extra info. More information about the competition and its structure will come out uh, much closer to the competition. We still got like two weeks, so keep that in mind. Otherwise, here's that contact info. Uh, take a screenshot if you need any of this. Please let us know. Anything you need, we will be here. Uh, what day is the competition again? 29th. Good point. I should have wrote it on the side. April 29th. At Ooh, some boy. point between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. It will not be four hours, but that's just kind of our allotted time. So we'll we'll be setting up and stuff like that. So we'll, right. we'll keep posting more information on that. Good to know. Thank you. No problem.